panel that rules against India recently is related to WTO's agreement which is called Information Technology Agreement. Now WTO has so many agreements, some related to agriculture such as agreement on agriculture. India is also a signatory to agriculture agreement also. Right. So these agreements are concluded in order to ensure that tariff rates are reduced down. That means barriers to trade in terms of trade, uh, tariff and custom duties etc. are reduced down across the globe. So therefore many agreements have been concluded. Now you can see the pre present case. The dispute settlement panel of WTO ruled that India has violated global trading rules with re reference to information technology agreement. Now this information technology agreement leads to uh, uh, talks about certain kinds of goods such as mobile handsets, components etc. Electronic components mostly. right? So India has imposed duties to the tune of 7.5% to 20%. Now countries such as European Union, Japan and Taiwan has challenged this under WTO. Okay. Now recently this panel of WTO dispute settlement panel has ruled in favor of European Union etc. saying that these imposition of duties are violation of the agreement itself. Okay. But what is India's stand on it? India says that smartphones did not exist at the time when the information technology agreement was signed. So therefore, it cannot be covered under the information technology agreement and we are providing duties on this. Okay. Now, why India was taking imposition of duties on certain electronic components? The reason is that it has resulted in significant investments both from Apple and Foxconn and other uh, companies also, which has also added to employment creation in India. Second thing, it has also led to increase in exports from India of these components and products. So therefore, it is economically beneficial for India to impose certain duties and restrictions. Okay. Now, let us uh, some, uh, understand something about you uh, about WTO's dispute re redressal system. See, WTO provides rules which has to be followed by all the countries, member countries. It talks about that freedom of trade has to be there, which was an important requirement for the promotion of trade across across the world. Now. Until unless there is a mechanism to penalize the defectors who do not obey the law and impose certain cost on, on them, no rule or no body can effectively function. Therefore, in order to ensure that all members are following the rules provided by it, a dispute settlement mechanism is provided so that its judgment or its ruling is binding on everybody. And if somebody is not complying with those rulings and the judgments, they are also then penalized in the form of uh, increased uh, penalties or increased restrictions on their exports by the rest of the world. Okay, so what is the process? If any dispute is there between two countries or two or more countries, first of all, they have to resolve it by way of discussions. If they are not able to resolve it by way of discussion, then they have to form a dispute set. They have to approach a dispute settlement panel. After the dispute settlement panel gives the ruling, then they go to the appellate, appellate body. And this appellate body, once it gives the ruling, is the final and the binding on all. Okay. Now, India wants to challenge this. The judgment, the, the ruling that came out recently was not by the appellate body but it was by the dispute settlement panel. That means the second level of the uh, dispute settlement mechanism. Now, India also has the option to go and appeal to the third level of the panel. Okay. So, now India is also planning to go to the third level for the appellate tribunal. But there is a catch here. What is the problem? The problem is there that panel or the appellate body is not functioning at the moment. 
Why? Because the members of this panel are not being appointed as a result of opposition from the United States. So this goes or this makes the situation of as a legal purgatory where there is no clear forward path to the resolution of the dispute because the panel is not functioning. Right. So this is the main thing explained here. Now, if we see the organizational structure of uh, WTO just for the sake of understanding and introduction, it is ministerial conference that is the highest decision making body and authority to decide on all matters and it meet, it has to meet at, at least once every two years. Right. So it is this body which ultimately decides on the agreement and the rules that has to be followed by the member countries and it has been done by the mutual discussions. Okay. Now second level is general councils in three guises which is the general council, the dispute settlement body and the trade policy review body. These are the second level. Now the general councils acts on behalf of the ministerial conference on all WTO affairs. Why there is a need of general council? Because between the two ministerial conference there is a gap in which lot of work related to WTO has to be done and conducted and to conduct those work in various areas such as dispute settlement and trade policy review these bodies are created. And it meets as dispute settlement body and trade policy review body to oversee whether the procedures for settling disputes and are followed or not and analyzing whether the trade policies are aligned with the norms and the rules of the WTO or not. Okay. Now the third level is councils for each broad area. Now what are the area are covered? One area is goods under which general agreement on tariff and good, trade is there. So GATS is there for the trade in goods. Then GATS is there for trade in services, general agreement on trade in services. Then for third area is related to intellectual property, right, which is the TRIPS. So trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. So there are three council. One council is good council, which oversees the GATS. Other council is the service council, which oversees uh, the uh, another GATS, which is related to service. And third council is TRIPS Council, which looks after the intellectual property right issues. Okay. Now, criticism of dispute settlement body. As I said, the dispute settlement is an important function. It is an important part of any, any body or international rule, even the domestic one also. Because if the rules are not followed, because there is no enforcement, enforcement mechanism, then there is no point of having rules themselves. Therefore, Dispute, dispute settlement body is also sometimes referred as crown jewel of WTO. If this dispute settlement is not there, then WTO cannot function, right? Because defectors can defect without being penalized for their defection. Okay, so this is why it's important. Now, what is the criticism of this? First of all, it's a lengthy and costly process. And developing countries does not have that kind of skills and technical competence also uh, to fight the lengthy cases in the WTO panels against the Western and developed countries which have better know-how and better understanding of the functioning of these bodies. Okay, and also the cost imposed is sometimes uh, difficult for developing countries to be financed. Second thing is bias towards developed countries. This body WTO has been born out of something called Washington Consensus which talks about regulating the uh, state uh, or reforming the state or economic system of the develop, developing countries. So developed countries want that developing countries should provide open their markets to their goods and their investments. Also they wanted that they have to internally restructure their economy by, uh, by allowing or inviting more private investments and lesser regulations of the economic systems in their own countries. So as a result of that they had started to build certain bodies to make sure that developing countries fall in line. Some, some of the bodies were like World Bank and IMF. WTO was one of the important bodies in the line of this Washington consensus. 
so this is the product of that area and this era as because it was mostly aligned with the interest of the western powers that's why it is also accused of being biased because rules itself are uh, are discriminatory which are not uh, helping the developing countries much and also the way it function is also biased right limited scope obviously it covers dispute settlement only in trade related related issues and other related issues such as environmental concerns and the social problems are not addressed in this now this is also an important thing to understand that if environmental related concerns are incorporated under wto which the western world wants then it will further give competitive disadvantages to the developing countries because they are not in a position to make environmentally sound goods or in a, or goods in a manner of an, uh, in environmentally sound manner right because their technical competence is lower as well as the resources to finance such kind of uh, production is also lower therefore it is some sometimes also we can say that it is also in favor of india that environmental concerns are still out of wto but it is a criticism that it has a limited scope now it also has the lack of transparency because it is not open to the public the disputes and the functioning in which it is happening it is not open to the public and therefore non governmental organizations and interest groups cannot participate in the process because ultimately we have to see that agreements that are signed will impact the people they will impact the farmers they will impact the industries etc so the groups that represents these interest farmers interests etc should be allowed to take part in the process because they are the direct stakeholders of the problem and if the stakeholders are not involved in the process then it can be said that it lacks transparency and people's participation right so this is one criticism limited enforcement mechanism because it lacks strong enforcement mechanism as we have seen recently also usa blocked the appointment of appellate tribunal members and therefore the dispute settlement mechanism as kind of come into the state of limbo